Hello everyone, welcome to Electronically Connected. So let's see what topics we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to talk about the cross-section of our NMOS and a PMOS, how it is constructed and what's it working, followed by the cross-section of a CMOS, its construction and also its working. So let's get started. We're going to be de briefly discussing what is a MOS. A MOS is a structure which is created by superimposing several layers of conducting and insulating materials. So it stands for metal oxide semiconductor. It is a sandwich-like material, as I mentioned, consisting of several layers of insulating and conducting materials. The structure is manufactured in a foundry using a series of chemical processes steps like oxidation, doping, lithography, deposition, etching, and many more, which we will discuss in depth at a later stage. Let us dive more inside MOS structure and understand the most basic type of MOS structure. It's called the CMOS. C stands for complementary. The CMOS technology provides two types of devices, also known as the transistors. It, it's the N-type and the P-type. That's correct. It's the same N-type and P-type doping that we have studied in the previous videos. The N-type is called as an N-MOS and the P-type transistor is called as a P-MOS. So the P-MOS is a MOS structure which is doped with P-type doping. The P-type doping was again the trivalent doping which led to holes such as boron. And the N-MOS doping was doped with a pentavalent such as phosphorus. The PMOS and the NMOS transistors operation is controlled by the electric field and hence it's called as MOSFET. MOSFET stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor because the operation of these transistors is again controlled by the electric field. Let us now understand what an NMOS and a PMOS looks like in the cross section. So here, let us draw my NMOS and here we have my PMOS. So the NMOS is a structure which is doped with N. So we have our N-type doping. So we're going to start with my P-type substrate. For my diagrams right now, let's consider the red color as P and yellow color as N. So we start for an NMOS with a P-type su substrate which is doped with N. So we have N plus doping. Now these two dopings are connected by an, a layer of silicon dioxide and over it we have another layer which is the polysilicon layer. This forms the gate. The terminals over here can be defined as one from here which is the gate, another drain from the other doping, we have the source and there's a connection from the substrate itself. It's called the bulk. Usually the bulk in an NMOS is connected to ground. Now let's move forward to the PMOS. The PMOS structure is just the opposite of an NMOS. So it's a MOS which is doped with P-type doping. So we have a P, so we're going to start with an N substrate and we're going to dope my N substrate with P type doping. So we have the P plus doping again over here. Two P dopings. Then both the dopings are connected with each other with silicon dioxide layer and then ending it with a polysilicon layer for my gate terminal. So again, we have my gate drain source and this is my bulk. Now the bulk in a PMOS structure is connected to a positive terminal. So here we have my PMOS and NMOS. So let us first understand the working of an NMOS and a PMOS. Let's start with NMOS. Here we can see that the bulk is connected to ground. At an initial stage, the gate is also connected to, a, to the ground. So we don't have any potential difference between my gate and the bulk. Let us be a little imaginative and understand that we have two layers, a P-type semiconductor layer and an N-type semiconductor layer. So we have something that forms again a diode. We can imagine the P-type and the N-type to form a diode. So here we can see that the diode's P-type is connected to the ground and the N-type is connected to the grid. 
so we don't have any potential difference at this stage there is no current flowing between these two channels and hence the transistor is off but what about the cases when we increase the voltage across the gate so now we increase the gate voltage so what happens is that my diode is now the n type is now connected to a positive terminal and the p type is connected to the negative terminal so all the free electrons they start collecting right below the gate and it forms a channel as the channel is formed the current starts flowing and the transistor is turned on so on the situations when the gate voltage is increased that means it goes towards the positive my n mos starts working and the transistor is turned on now the working of a p mos is just the opposite of an n mos we know that the body the bulk is positively connected at the starting stage when my gate is also positively connected again there is no potential difference the junction has reversed bias no channel is formed and hence the transistor is in off state now let us decrease the gate voltage so here we decrease the gate voltage as we decrease the gate voltage we have my diode right over here so what happens to the diode is that the diode's p type is connected to a negative terminal and here we have the positive terminal so now the holes present in the p type they get attracted to the negative terminals so we can see all the positive charges they get attracted near the gate terminal it forms a channel as the channel is formed the transistor is turned on so the p mos is turned on when the gate voltage is negative and the transistor is turned on and for n mos when the gate voltage is positive the transistor is turned on so let's write this down a bit neatly for an n mos let's understand first the symbol of an n mos the n mos looks like this and we have the p mos with a bubble in front of the gate to show that it is a p mos so we have the n mos and the p mos with my gate terminal drain source gate drain source currently we can write drain and source interchangeably but when connecting an n mos and p mos together or with some other device you have to make sure that the drain gets connected to the required terminal so we have the n mos and the p mos the gate terminal of an n mos and a p mos is what controls the flow of current between the drain and the source for both the devices so when my gate is positive the n mos is turned on and when it is negative the n mos is turned off and the p mos works in the opposite way so when the gate is positive the p mos is turned off and negative then the p mos is turned on now what do we need mean by the positive and the negative terminals so when it's positive it's basically the supply voltage we call it as vdd and uh, when we have a negative terminal we call it as ground uh, digitally vdd means 1 and ground means 0 so if the gate terminal of an nmos is 1 that means it's turned on and when it's 0 that means it's turned off so we can see that the switching of my gate from 1 to 0 is actually turns my my transistor turns on and off it looks like a switch if this is my nmos let's treat my transistor as a switch this is my pmos situations when my gate is 1 the nmos turns on so there is a conducting channel between it and the pmos is turned off however in cases when my gate is 0 the nmos is turned off so it's the switch is open and the pmos is turned on so the switch is turned on now let us understand the structure of a cmos a cmos is actually a connection of a pmos and an nmos the combination of it so let us draw first we have a pmos and here we have the nmos both the gates of my pmos and nmos are connected together to give the input and here we have the output this is my ground let me depict the terminals we have the gate of the pmos this is my pmos and this is my nmos this is the gate terminal we have the source and the drain again for an nmos we have the gate drain and source so when we creating a cmos we have to be careful about the source and the drain connection so 
again the CMOS is actually an inverter this type of connection of a PMOS and NMOS together is an inverter or NOT gate so if the input is 1 what happens is my input is 1 let's understand the truth table we discussed earlier that when my input is 1 the PMOS turns off and my NMOS turns on so the gate terminal when it's 1 it turns on and hence the output is 0 now how is the output 0 let's understand this if this is turned on so we have a conducting path between the drain and the source of an NMOS and here it's open. So there is no flow of current from my VDD to the output terminal but we have a flow of current from my ground to the output terminal and hence we get a zero at the output. Let's consider the opposite condition when we have a zero. When we have a zero the NMOS is turned off so there is no direct connection between the ground and the output terminal however the PMOS is turned on so there is a connection between the source and the drain terminals of a PMOS. So the VDD, it flows from the VDD to the output terminal and hence we get a 1. We can see that if the input is 1, the output is 0 and when the output is 1, the input is 0. So that means it's complementary of each other. Hence, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Let us quickly go through the cross section of a CMOS and understand how an NMOS and a PMOS looks like in a cross section. I'm going to be using the same colors red for uh, depicting the P-type and yellow for depicting the N-type. So this is what a CMOS structure looks like. This is a cross section where we have the N plus doping and the P plus doping. Let us mark the terminals. We have the gate terminal and bulk. So we can see that section of the CMOS is my PMOS and the other section is my NMOS. We started with the P substrate where we have an N well to show the PMOS structure which is doped with P plus doping and an N plus doping for the bulk connection. Then we have the P substrate for the N type doping and P doping for the bulk resistor. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Till then. Happy learning!